I want to start this week's video out by saying thank you to every one of the people that sow into this ministry. Every partner, whether you've sowed once or a thousand times, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry. You're helping us reach untold amount of people in jails and prisons all over this nation. Not to mention what we do on the podcast, reaching people all over the world. You have a big part in, in assisting God to do what he is doing through this ministry, to, to change people's lives all over this nation for his good, his glory. And, and I want you to understand something. God uses people to, to not only to be a light for him in this world, but to finance things that are going on. If you've listened to this podcast any at all, we are believing to, to reach 10 different facilities this year. We, we got into seven last year with ramen and pizzas. And, and this year, I'm believing that we're going to pick up three more. And, and the ones that I'm believing for will almost double what we, the, the amount of inmates and officers that we ministered to last year. So thank you for all you're doing, all you have done and all you're going to do to, to just to assist us and help us do what God has called and commissioned us to do, and that is to teach the world who they are in Christ Jesus or who they can, can be if they're not born again. Thank you. I, this is week 27 of Your Place in Him Scripture Study. Father, I praise you. And I thank you for the truth in your word. Lord, we can count on you. You're not a man that you should lie. But you will back up everything that you have written down in your word for us to live in. Guide and direct me today. Lord, touch my mind and touch my mouth. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. We are uh, in Colossians this week. The, ch the third chapter and the first verse. The King James says, If ye then be risen with Christ. Talking about if you're born again. It says, Seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of the Father. And I, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. What are those, what are those things? What, what, what's he talking about here? Let me read the New Living Translation. It says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ. Talking about giving your heart and life to Jesus Christ, being born again, being saved. It says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. The Amplified Classic says, If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim, and see, aim at and seek the rich eternal treasures that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Now I looked at Philippians 4 and 8. I noticed, I noticed after I'd looked it up, I, I walked through the kitchen at the house and, and Missy has it written on a, uh, a chalk board. We've got, she's got a, a little square of, of stuff that we have stuck to the refrigerator and you can write on it with chalk. And I look and, and looked and read this very scripture, Philippians 4 and 8. It says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And, and that goes so well with what we're talking about today. Seeking the things of God, keeping your eyes on Him. And if you are born again, to always look to where you need to to be standing in the Word. That Word will, will never let you down. It will never lead you astray. God's Word. I'm not talking about man's traditions, 
Man's traditions makes God's word of no effect. And I don't want anything to do with traditional man religion. But I want to always point you to the fact that if you are born again, if you're a a born-again child of God, you can seek those things which are above. God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. And it all comes out of His Word. It's so simple. I don't know, over the the years, you know, just long before we were ever thought about, man got got his hands into this and somehow uh, just steered, steered us away from him and what he said. And, and, and put us in the, into the place where we hold man's opinion more important than God's word. And that is not the case. That is not what I'm pointing you today to. I'm telling you, if God's word is true above all opinion. And if you want to see things strong in your life, if you want to become strong in your life, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? You're going to seek those things which are above. And, and it all comes out of God's book, God's Word, the Bible. And, and if we will purposely, purposely point out in, in God's Word, say, this is what I'm going to stand on on this issue. I'm not looking at circumstance. I'm not looking at anything but the truth which comes from God's Word. He wants us confident in this world because Confidence is faith. Can I say this? Can, can, can you look at faith as a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen? But could, I, could we replace the word faith with trust? You know, Psalms 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. You say, well, how do I acknowledge him in all, everything I do? You acknowledge him by putting his word first place in that situation. In everything you do, compare the, the word of God to what you're having to deal with. I'm going to promise you, the word of God will never steer you wrong. And the spirit of God will always bring up what you have hidden in your heart. And that is God's Word. The the Holy Spirit will never deal with you any other way than through the truth in God's Word. And when we come to that conclusion in our own life and realize that, hey, God wants us to be confident so He can use us out here in this world. But we have got to be steadfast and strong. I'm talking about settled, rooted and grounded in the truth. And the truth is that God's word is true above all opinion. Above every opinion, including mine, God's word is true. And if we'll take that word and keep our eyes on it and allow him to, to minister to us and to teach us, to strengthen us, lift us up so that we can walk strong through this life. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. There's people out here in this world that need God desperately. But they'll never darken the doors of a church. It's up to us to take God to them. To be the light that he wants us to be. I was sitting here two days ago in this very church. And got a text from an inmate that I had met years and years ago. He and I had... Had, had become friends, and, and he, he's got a tremendous testimony of what God has done in his life. And he, didn't, he texts me, he's out now, he's out on parole and doing very well, and he texts me, and he, all he done was text me a verse of Scripture. That was it. Not, hey, how you doing, good morning or anything. He just texted me the Word of God. And I'm going to tell you something. That Word is far, far better than, than any good morning or what when I get when I get things from inmates it does me good because there's a lot of times in this 
in this walk that I walk that I think, am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Am I getting what I'm trying, what God's given me across to the people? And things like, just little things like that gives me a, a lift to know and understand that, hey, son, you're on, you're, you're on the right track. You're giving them, giving them my word. I don't want to ever do anything other than give you what God says. My opinion don't matter. My words don't matter. It's what God says in his word that matters. And if we'll stand on that word, I promise you, we'll never, we will never fail. You may stagger and you may stumble at times. The devil may trip you up, but I promise you, if you'll keep your eyes on the prize, and that is God, his precious son, and his Holy Spirit that guides you, you'll never go wrong. I promise you that. Uh, we're in Colossians 3. Forgive me. We're going to drop down two scriptures to the third verse. It says, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Let me read the New Living Translation. It says, for ye, for you died to this life. And your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the world, you will share all his glory. It's the Amplified Classic. It says, for as far as this world is concerned... You have died, and your new real life is hidden, is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in the splendor of his glory. I'm talking about when he comes back. This is, this is, what, this is what I got out of this verse. I don't want any glory in this world. As far as Stacy's concerned. Because I'm not doing this to pat myself on the back and, 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 and be able to, uh, to get any glory out of it myself. But when I read this and understand that whenever Christ comes back, that we, his people, his born-again children will appear with him. He's going he's to come back and get his church one of these days. He's going to pull us out. And when he comes back to rule and reign in, on this earth, he's going to bring us back with him. And I don't care how unworthy that you feel. I don't care how unworthy you feel about what all these scriptures say to you, they are true. And Christ has made you worthy. Not what you have done, but that you have had faith in him, what he's done. The promises that he's made are true for all of us. And I want you to understand that he stands, or rather he sits at the right hand of the Father, make an intercession for all that we screw up in this lifetime. And I'm going to say we because we all make mistakes. We all sin and come short of the glory of God. I understand that. But being justified by faith, by God, by God, by justified freely by God's grace through faith that is in Christ Jesus. I want you to understand something today. 
God wants to let you know that you, he is on your side and you're far more than you ever real, will realize in this world. You have to take these scriptures by faith and believe what he said. Salvation comes by faith. Everything we, we receive from God comes by faith. And, and our ability, our determination, and our willingness to speak those truths no matter what we're seeing, no matter what's going on around us, to speak the Word of God over any situation that we come, again, we come into, to know without a shadow of a doubt that God is for us. He's for us. Let me go on. Forgive me for being so emotional this morning. Second Timothy 2 and 11. It says, it is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. The New Living Translation says, This is a trustworthy saying. If we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure hardship, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. Now, I read that last part of that verse. is talking about people that deny him as Savior, people that have rejected him as Savior. The Amplified Classic says, For as far as this world is concerned, you have died, and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears. Oh, I jumped, didn't I? I'm sorry. The Amplified Classic for 2 Timothy 2 and 11 says, The saying is sure and worthy of confidence. If we have died with him, we also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny and disown and reject him, we will also deny, he will also deny and, and disown and reject us. Now, I want to talk to you about that, that second to the last part of that verse. It says, we shall also reign with him. What does reign mean? It means to rule. And as a born-again child of God, we are called kings and priests in this world. A king reigns. A king doesn't get out here and work by the sweat of his brow. But he speaks what needs to be done and, and others go and do it. And this is what God wants us to realize that we are in this world. That we can speak his word by faith over situations in our lives, in other people's lives that are just, I'm talking about, just devastating to them or maybe to us. But we can stand up with all the faith and confidence that God has given us and say, no, my God supplies all my needs, whether it be physical, spiritual, or financial. He does it through Christ, which strengthens us, through God's Word that strengthens us, because God's Word is Christ. The, the Bible says the Word became flesh and dwelled among us, talking about Jesus, our Lord and Savior. I want you to understand something today. You can reign in this world. Today, you can have faith in God in what he has said and reign throughout your life strong in him. This, this is, if you've listened to these, these videos over the last couple of years, you're going, you've seen what we, we are talking about. That if we will believe what God says and know without a shadow of a doubt that he's going to back us up when we speak that, I'm going to tell you something. He'll change your life. He'll, he'll, there'll, he'll cause miracles to happen in your life when you believe what he has said about you.
to you and for you. God's for us. He's for us. Isaiah 52, 12 said the Lord will go before you. And the God of Israel will be your rear guard. I've stood on that verse for years. God opened the door to me, for me, at this local jail in 2018. And I won't ever forget what Alan Crowder told me when we were leaving. We were, we were walking out the sidewalk and we got to the end, to the end of the sidewalk. And he went one way and I went the other. And he looked back over his shoulder and he said, Now make sure that you show up. And I thought to myself, there's no way I won't show up because God has opened that door. He's given me something. He's given me something I, I can't put in words. A heart that yearns. The people, people, people's lives change, whether they be in jail or on the street. To see them come to know and realize that, my goodness, I can count on him. His word says I can count on him, and I can. I've stood on that for years because without him and his truths, I'm nothing. I can't do anything. But through him, I can do all things. I would have never in a million years told you six years ago that this podcast would be approved in over a thousand or almost a thousand jails. But it is. I was talking to a man yesterday and he had been in jail. And uh, yeah, this has been years ago. And he, he was asking me if I still went. Uh, another friend of ours uh, asked, told him to ask me. He said, are you still going to the jail? And I told him, yeah, and told him about the podcast. And he said, well, I'll just say this. I'm glad that I don't uh, get to see those videos, talking about being in jail and watching them on the tablet. I said, you can see those videos. They're on YouTube. But I know what he means. I know, I don't know how you feel. I don't know, I've never been in jail like that and been forced to stay. I, I can't imagine what people go through having to be locked up. But I know without a shadow of a doubt that my God shall supply all your needs. He'll lift you up if, he, if you'll allow him to, if you'll just believe what he has said. God wants you to be a light in this world. And you may be in the, in the very place that he can use right now. I'm, t I'm telling you. I I'm convinced of it. That there are people in jails and prisons that this podcast goes into that people will never, ever pay me any attention. Or these videos that they'll pay attention to you. They, you're, you're one of them. And you can be a light to them. For him. For him. I want you to realize something today. That what he has called you to do. Is to proclaim his goodness. His mercy. And his love. To anybody that you can. And I'm going to promise you something. There's not a doubt in my mind. There's people right there where you're at that will listen to you. They will. Oh, I thank God. I thank God for what he has done. In, 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 in jails and prisons and people's lives all over this country. Through this podcast. Through what he has said through this podcast. Not through my stammering ways. But through him. Let's go on to the next one. John six fifty seven. 
John 6, 57 says, As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even shall he live by me. Now, you know, this, not, I don't know, I hadn't read the, the, this entire scripture in a long time, but when Christ done this, there was a lot of people left because he, they thought he was literally talking about consuming his body, his flesh, and his blood. That wasn't what he was talking about. He was talking about consuming his word. We have, we can consume his word every day of our lives. Let me read the New Living Translation. It says, I live because of the living Father who sent me. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me or feeds on his, on his word will live because of me. You want life? You want a strong life? Consume his word. Just consume it as much as you can. If you can't, if you, I'm not telling you to run around with a Bible stuck to your forehead. But if, if, I'm going to tell you this. If, if you're not reading God's word, meditate on God's word. If you're not meditating on God's Word, compare God's Word to the situation that you're dealing with right now. I'm going to tell you something. It'll, it'll never, never steer you wrong. It will never steer you wrong. Listen at the Amplified Classic of John 6, 57. It says, Just as the living Father sent me, and I live by, through, because of the Father... Even so, whosoever continues to feed on me, continually feeds on me, whoever takes me for his food and is nourished by me shall in his turn live through and because of me. There's life in Christ Jesus. A life that passes all understanding. A life that... I look back over my life. Well, we were at, we we went to another church years ago, and they asked me to speak one morning, and I I I'll never forget it. I said it's amazing what what you can do when you look back over your shoulder and see what God has brought you through, saved you from, lifted you out of. And when you look back over that over your life and see that all has that God has done, and then look forward, not knowing what's coming, not knowing what 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 will will take place in the next minute of your life, but knowing what He's done behind you, you know that He's got you back as you walk forward, and He's going to make sure that you make it through. God does that. He'll do that. And he wants you to believe that. He wants you to believe that. Since 2018, my wife and I have been through a lot. Satan tried to kill me in 2021. Spent two weeks in the hospital. I was talking on the phone to a person. I told him, I said, I, said, I, I never doubted that God was going to bring me through this. I'm going to tell you something. If it hadn't been for his truths, if it hadn't been for what I had hidden in my heart, and the Holy Spirit had that to, to deal with me about, to show me without a shadow of a doubt that he had me. He had me. I couldn't speak. Three strokes, a heart attack, and blood clots all in my lungs. And all I knew to do was to, to speak as well as I could what God's word said. That by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm healed. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, and not next year. But today. You know what? I walked out of that hospital speaking. Not speaking the way I do now, but speaking. And it wasn't long. I, I never missed a day in that jail. That, that, the whole time that I was gone, that jail was shut down for COVID. And, and it was amazing. When they opened it back up, I walked right back in there like nothing had happened. 
there was a few inmates that that were close to me and 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 they they knew they were there was something up but didn't know what and i had the privilege of giving god all the glory for bring, bringing me through that so that I could bring you his word. I, there's not a doubt in my mind. That's what he done it for. Because he was going to use these videos, this ministry, to touch the world. To lift you up and strengthen you through his word. Not like I say, not through my stammering ways. But through his truths. God loves us more than we'll ever realize in this world. He's written these truths down so that we can stand in faith in him. Stand against what's coming against this world that we live in right now. And be able to know that without a shadow of doubt, we're coming through it. Glory to God. We're coming through it. This last scripture, this last scripture just pretty much sums up how I feel about him. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said, saith unto him, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. The New Living Translation says Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except through me. The Amplified Classic says Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by and through me. You know, I think back what I was just talking about. When all those people left, Jesus is the way. He's the truth and the life. Without him, I'm nothing. Without him, I can do nothing. But you get back up to that 657 and talking about when he was, was that the verse? Yeah, John 657, when he was talking about consuming him talking about consuming his word there's another place it talks about when it when he when he spoke that that a multitude left because they were talk they thought he was talking about literally consuming his flesh and his blood and he asked peter he said will you go also and peter said how I feel today and how I feel, felt for a long, long time. Where, <laughs> where do I have to go? You have the words of eternal life. I want you to know today, without a shadow of a doubt, if, you're, if you have a copy of God's word, you have the words to eternal life, the truth that will carry you through regardless of where you're at. God wants you strong in this world, not to just to look at, but to use as a tool for his honor and his glory. To, to send you out in your, the world that you operate in, that you walk in. To tell others, look what my Lord done for me. And he will do it for you also. God knows where you're at. He knows what you're dealing with. And I want you to know right now, he will carry you through whatever you're going through. God loves you. And he cares for you. And he wants more than anything in this world for you to know that. And I feel in the bottom of my heart that's what, that's what I'm called to do for you and, and multitudes of others to teach you what God says and to help you to lay down all the shame and, the, and the, just the 
downtroddenness, the condemnation that this world brings and religion brings it. I'm going to tell you something. Good intentioned people bring condemnation to a lot of people. I'm not here to condemn you or shame you for the mistakes you've made. I'm here to lift you up and edify you. Not by my words, but by God's truths, His words. Now that brings me to what I do every time I do a podcast. I want to give someone an opportunity to give their heart and life to Jesus Christ. There's not a doubt in my mind over the years, since 2018, there's been tens of thousands of people that have watched these videos and listened to my podcast that that are not born again. And I always make it a point to, to make sure that I give someone an opportunity to give their heart and life to Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not asking you if you beg God to forgive you 10,000 times in your lifetime because we've all done that. I'm asking you, have you ever made Jesus Lord? Invited him in and say, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. I proclaim you. I receive you as my Lord and Savior by faith. And, 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 And I believe that God... My Heavenly Father raised you from the dead to justify me. If you've never done that, today is the day. Do that. Make Jesus Lord of your life. Let him come into your heart and your life and and change you. And then strengthen you and send you back out to be used of him. To guide you and direct you. You want help? I'm going to tell you something. The best help you will ever find is in his word. And I'm going to tell you, his spirit, his spirit will guide you through his word. But to receive his spirit, you have to be born again. When when you give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, you make Jesus Lord of your life, God sends his spirit and, and he dwells in you our bodies are the temple of god and god's spirit dwells in his born again children and it's there he's there for a reason the holy spirit in the is not an it he's there for a reason and that is to guide you and to help you most important thing you'll ever do as a person is to be born again to give your heart and life to be saved To give Jesus your heart and life. But after you're born again, the most important thing you'll ever do is find out what God says about you in his word. To find out who you are in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. To find out what he has said to strengthen you and to edify you. To build you up. I'm going to tell you something. I, I heard this man talk about this years ago. We were talking about being edified. He said, I don't want to be edified. He said, I want the church to be edified. He was talking. We were standing in the building. He said, I want the church to be edified. And I'm thinking to myself, you are the church. We are the church. This building's just a building. We make up the church, God's people. Do you want to be part of God's church today? Give him your heart and life. Make him Lord of your life and watch him change your life like you've never seen it changed before. And then get in this book. I said the most important thing as a person you'll ever do is be born again. But the, but the most important thing as a Christian is you'll, that you'll ever do is find out who you are in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. And who you are in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior, is written down in all these scriptures that we've been going through. Today, if you've never made Jesus Lord, make him Lord. If you're away from him, run back to him. Confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all all unrighteousness. Do that today. Make Jesus Lord of your life and watch him change your life forever. 
Father, I thank you for this time that you have given us. I thank you for giving us what we can stand on, the truth. Lord, I praise you for your truths, your word. Guide us, direct us throughout these next few months. Help us to always listen to you so that we can touch as many people as we can. Lord, teach, touch every person that listens to this video or watches this video. Help them to see and understand that what we are staggering through in this world, trying to give them, is true. And that is your word. Oh, I thank you for your word. I glorify you today, and I praise you. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen.